it hit me when I heard Koi Mil Gaya. When I heard the idea, I felt like home. I felt I'm understanding what I'm about now. You know, I I need a DNA match. I was quite embarrassed because uh, a lot of uh, people I ad admire, respect, uh, would kind of like make fun of uh, the fact that I am so crazy about you know uh, method and uh, you know pagalo uh, When I was crying as Rohit, there was a certain uh, uh, voice that came out, and that became a bit of that became Rohit's normal. Uh, voice. I think it's so lovely to have you back on Film Companion. It is an absolute pleasure. It's been too many years. It's always amazing <laughs> talking with you. And I'm especially thrilled because we're here to celebrate 20 years of Koi Milga. Right. Wow. Yeah. 20 years. You know, I, as I rewatched the film, I was really struck by how much of the emotion still lands. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. nice to know. No, it really does. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe the conversation around what is normal, what is not normal yeah, hasn't yeah, aged yeah, so well. Yeah, yeah. But the sincerity, yeah. the innocence of Rohit, yeah. all of that still connects and you still are rooting for him in that damn basketball game. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. How do you feel when you see it now? So, I also caught it very recently. Um, I do remember and I know that I've lived with this film uh, since it was released and it really was aging really well up until I saw it with my kids <laughs> very very recently now um, kids are a great perspective oh my god yeah <laughs> amazing absolutely amazing and I didn't even need to hear you know what their feedback was because just looking at the film from that filter while watch sitting with them and watching the film I realized how much our cinema has evolved how much our, uh, you know, uh, uh, the expression, uh, our interpretation, expression, how much the audience's focus on the nuances, all of that has emerged so beautifully in the past few years. Uh, thanks to, you know, uh, all the content of the world being available to almost everybody now. So everyone's getting a little bit more educated and etc, etc. But I, um, I, to be honest, I was a little broken hearted that, um, you know, I felt like I was, I was good. But if I would do the film now, oh my God, I would have not needed to do so much. I was so afraid at that time that the audience will not, will not get my exact thought. You know, they will not be, I want them to understand every single thought of mine. Uh, so if I'm angry, but there's, there's dignity, I, I want that to come through in my eyes. I want them to not miss anything. Uh, so there was, a, there was that fear. Today that fear is not there because the audience, you know, um, understands. Uh, they're all so, they've done so much, all of us, also through the pandemic. There's so much introspection, there's so much talk on social media about mental health and about how, how much awareness we all have about ourselves, about each other, about relationships, about marriage, about everything. Uh, so today you would not need to do so much. But you're being unfair on yourself. It was a different time. Yeah, but it's also good. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. I, I am extremely, extremely proud of the film. You because be. I saw tears in my kids' eyes. So you're right, you know, the emotion lands and that's the, that's the beauty of the film. And uh, I, think, I think I walked a very fine line. Today when I see the film, I think, you know, it's a little bit more and it would have uh, not lasted. But it's just on that line. It and is. It's just on, the, it's a very <laughs> fine line, it's just on the line. And I'm like, oh. Bach <laughs> gay, you know. Uh, but it was amazing. It was amazing to realize that, you know, how 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 we all grow. You know how how much the cinema has grown. It's it's so relieving, you know. As as actors, you really can just just be, you know, and just feel, and not be afraid. But you know, Ritik, I want to say that. Sure, we've all grown as an audience, as artists. But look at the conviction that your father had oh, yeah. 20 years ago. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, 
here's a, you know, we speak now about conviction, right? We talk mm. about SS Rajamouli's incredible conviction yeah. in RRR or yeah. what Sanjay Leela Bhansali does, you know, Absolutely creating these great. incredible worlds. Look at the conviction this man had mm. 20 years ago. Mm. He goes to LA to get technicians. Mm. He goes to Australia to get this jadu, mm. okay? Mm. And he's making a science fiction musical. Yeah, with an action hero up until that time who was doing action films and not doing so well because a lot of uh, my films had failed at the box office. Exactly. And then he's taking this this uh, star who has been giving, you know, flops and turning him into a mentally challenged character in his film where he's betting everything uh, on. Um, so well, it, where, did he, where did he get this courage? I think when he got the idea, when he, when he first, when, when the idea emerged, I think uh, what bolstered was my incredibly superlative uh, reaction to it. I was so excited uh, that I was going to get a chance to play this, play this character. This, the, I could just feel that it, there was something waiting to explode. I could just feel that. And uh, I think that kind of like gave him a humongous push at that point of time. Until of course, you know, the outside world started infiltrating that solid thought and uh, gave him a world view of how it's going to be. Hey, you know, this guy's an action hero. You're turning him into a mentally challenged uh, kid. You're making a sci-fi film. There's Jadu, there's... There's a spaceship. I, there's a spaceship. Uh, you know, this is, it's too risky. And at this point of time, your son should come back as, as an action hero. So a lot, a lot of that was happening. And he hit a, he hit one, he hit a breaking point and he said, Nahi banate. Doubts came in. Came in fully, fully. And he said, let's not. Phir? Then I remember, I don't know the, the chronology of how or the geography, but I remember talking to his very good friend and colleague, Anil Kapoor. So Mr. Anil Kapoor was there and uh, I love him. He loves me. So I went and I begged him. First, I asked him what he thought of uh, this concept that dad was now rejecting. He said he absolutely loved it. I said, oh, then this is my chance internally, I'm saying. Begging him to, you know, convince my dad to make this. And I think he could see it in my eyes. <laughs> he could see the sense of loss if, uh, and how heartbreaking it would have been if he had not, uh, he would not make this. And I think uh, he had a conversation with my dad and I entered that con con conversation. And within that conversation, I saw my dad, my dad's eyes light up you know something lit up inside him and when he takes a decision then i can i can tell when it is now it is unbreakable so the switch flips and yeah. that's it so now he had lived through the risks he had lived through the possibilities of you know failure and then when he said chalo let's do it then i knew that now it's unbreakable that's an amazing story. So Anil Kapoor yeah. played a pivotal role he in Koyal. He played Koyalia. a pivotal role. Yes, yes, absolutely. But but Ritik, let's go to you, right? Okay, you're convinced. You're a sci-fi fan. You love this idea from yeah, get go. Totally. But look at where you were, right? You have the, you know, debut yeah. of the decade yeah. with Kahuna Pyare. Then all these films underperform. Hmm. Just before this film, you have my Prem Ki Diwani, which is one of the few times you've been criticized. Yeah. Right? You got hell for that film. Absolutely. At that point, any other A-list star would say, let me find the most mm. commercially successful director and let me make the safest film. Mm. Why were you convinced that it was okay for you to play this guy who's weeping, who's being bullied? Mm. What was going through your head? I think, I think uh, Destiny played out just like in the, in the best way possible for me to learn the right lessons where my profession is concerned and where you know, my person is concerned because I could sense the instability within me while I was performing in these films in which I was playing this uh, hero. And I, because I, I had a memory of, of something that centered me when I was doing a Kahuna Pyar Hai. I was, uh, you know, pretty centered when I was doing a Mission Kashmir. I was pretty centered when I was doing Fiza. 
I was centered in all of these. As an artist. As an artist, as as Rithik mm. on set, I was I felt I felt safe. You know, I felt safe. And then when I was doing films like uh Mai Prem Ki Divani Hu, uh all the others which I did uh Na Tum Jano Na Hum, uh, even K K3G for that matter, uh, there was something that was unsettled. I couldn't understand why am I not, you know, why am I not feeling safe? Um, and it hit me when I heard Koi Mil Gaya. When I heard the idea, I felt like home. I felt I'm understanding what I'm about now. You know, I, I need a DNA match. I need a DNA match, even if it is 1% or 2%, I need some kind of match uh, with the character that I am. I can't play something that I am not. And I know people say it's acting and you got to act it. But I don't think I'm good at that. You know, I, I can't act something that I have not been or not felt even like 1% in my life. So I had to... Koi Mil Gaya was that learning and it didn't matter whether it would, uh, you know, uh, you know, lessen my uh, status as a star, uh, you know, it's not a film that is going to again hit that bullseye. All of that was exterior uh, worries. I was extremely happy with what was happening inside. You know, I still remember the joy that I felt while brushing my teeth before a day of shoot at a Koi Mil Gaya uh, set and brushing my teeth and then stopping and saying, damn, I want to feel like this for every single film I ever do in my life again. I want to feel like this. I remember that, that moment, you know, and I just, and then I'm brushing my teeth and I'm like, while brushing my teeth, there's a high, you know, so the process is something that I just, I, 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 I grab with, you know, both my hands and I said, I'm not going to let this go now. This is what I need to feel. This is what I want to feel. And that kind of like sorted me out. I didn't do, uh, that's when I started doing after Koi Milia, one film at a time. That's the flip. So I had to go through that journey of uncertainty, unsafety, failure, uh, you know, not knowing where, where, where am I? And then boom, Koi Milia happens. I'm at my lowest professionally and feeling amazing inside. And I said, ah, okay, all these films failed. And while I was shooting them, I was feeling unsafe. Now I'm feeling home. Let's see what the outcome of this is. And it hit another bullseye. Yeah. And that was it. I was, you know, I was set. I just knew what I had to do now. <laughs> very lucky, very fortunate. Well, you know, I was looking at old interviews of Rakesh Ji, right? Mm. He said you found Rohit's posture, his clothes, the way he talked. You constructed yeah. what this man-child would be, yeah. right? He said you would lock yourself up in a hotel room mm. two to three days before shoot and you yeah. would just get into character and then stay in that character for most of the shoot. Now, nobody worked yeah. like that at the time. Yeah, and people made me feel so embarrassed about it. You know, I'm I'm so glad that uh, we are we are more uh, you know open now uh, to actors having a process and because up until then, our, I think the ideals in our industry were kind of a little I don't even know the word, but um, I I was not doing something that you know was 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 efforted. I had no other way. I had no other way. I knew the feeling that I, I wanted to, uh, you know, have inside. And to reach there, I just had to apply this process. I, I had to be secluded. I because uh, it was just I could not lock on to the feeling if uh, I was around people who knew me as Rithik. It kind of like displaced me. Uh, so I um, locked myself up in a, a hotel room. I think I was there for five days before this sh the shoot began. Just constructing, you know, uh, playing with the Rubik's Cube, I remember. I don't know. I was trying to like see what, what all uh, would be conducive to kind of like becoming this character, be it props or be it clothes or hair. And I was, I was really enjoying that process. And then on set, I, for the entire time, I, I just stayed as Rohit. 
and it was so much fun. Uh, I was delighted because I was surrounded by actors like Preeti and uh, Rekha ji who, who, who didn't judge that, you know. And but you're saying people did? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, up until then, I was quite embarrassed because uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know how to say this, but I mean, People I ad admire, respect, uh, would kind of like make fun of uh, the fact that I am so crazy about, you know, uh, method and, uh, you know, pagal ho gaya hai. Kya zarurat hai? Kya zarurat hai? It's acting. Just go there and say your lines. Act it. It's acting. I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm not that good an actor. I need to, you know, do, do, my, do my process. I need to look at it far more times. And so, but now, now I'm, I'm really glad that people actually... Uh, also, like you know, thanks to you, you have you have a, something known as masterclass, where you come, people sit and talk about their art, and you know, without judgment. It is it is so nice that people are you know now actually understanding that that uh, you know it's 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 not about playing a hero. It's not about just having the confidence and the swag. It is it, there is another. There is another hero. There is another actor. You know, there's another process which is also delightful. It's yeah. a, it's a learning. It's it's education. It's it's uh, schooling. You know, it's unlearning. It's all of that, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and I I, I hope uh, you know students of cinema uh, kind of uh, you know uh, take that in and 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 kind of like you know enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great profession because of that. Right. You know, it's not a great profession because of, oh, look at the accolades and look at the star status. That's not going to be your life. That's going to be a week in your life, you know, when the film releases or, you know, you're traveling, you get to be at the airport and people look at you, you know, uh, that's when you get to enjoy that side of it. But the process by itself, it's so much, so much fun, you know, and today on set, I see so many actors applying process and applying, applying themselves, applying their minds, you know, asking about motivations and why are we saying this line? Can I do it like that? Can I do it like that? It's so much nicer. <laughs> but at Koi Milgia time, it wasn't, it, wasn't. It, it wasn't there, you know, it didn't exist. Tell me, where did you pick up these things? Because, you know, as I watch, I was also seeing there's so many just lovely small things, right? Like, the expression you have on your face when mm. the Kasoli Tigers are winning and she's cheering for Raj and you're uh. just looking confused yeah. and hurt. Yeah. Uh, and then you have this, you know, when you're dancing to its magic, there's this look of just abandon yeah. and yeah. joy. Like, how did you construct? Where did you take it from? I think I was, I must say that I was also very lucky because I had... Uh, lived a childhood that had instances where that I could take from you know so you mind your own childhood uh, yeah my my I I experienced you know being bullied I experienced uh, having a, a a stutter which was a handicap and was made fun of and people laughed and so I understood I had I had uh, information about that you know, I, I had e emotional intelligence about that. So I could apply that, you know, it was, it was, it was, I was fortunate. Um, but yeah, to then, of course, I, I knew I had the heart. I knew I had the heart over it. So half the battle was won. Then came in the craft and I said, okay, how is he going to talk? How is he going to walk? And um, I started, of course, I always start with the hair, you know, once I get the look right. And... Uh, I think Rohit was just there in me, you know, as a part of me didn't ever grow up. A part of me, uh, uh, you know, the, the traumatized part uh, of me, uh, I think, remained, remained a child, remained that vulnerable. Um, and uh, that's, that's the part that I, I usually uh, go to uh, when, when I have to be emotional. It's that part that gets activated. So, uh, but seeing that in a in a in a in a positive way, when you connect the dots, the things that that you go through, <laughs> they will all become your resource at some point, and that's what happened with uh, me. But yeah, for the for the voice, I I found Rohit's uh, voice 
while I was, uh, you know, practicing how he would cry. So when I was when I was making the voice uh, while while crying, I'm strange how I've never mentioned this, but because uh, I've done so many interviews about this, but uh, I remember uh, when I was crying as Rohit, there was a certain uh, 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 voice that came out, and that became a bit of that became Rohit's normal uh, voice. So it came from a cry. Uh, and I kind of like took it from there and then tried and rehearsed uh, talking with that same uh, ah, ah. so it's that that the, the vocal cords go lower because it's actually a cry but uh, he, 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 he talks like that but uh, it doesn't sound like a cry anymore when, I, when, when right. you do it as his, but there's uh, some voice. anguish in it but yeah so, but it came from a cry right and uh, I I think I must have uh, gone to every single uh, eyewear uh, shop in the world, uh, uh, you know, to, to find the right glasses for, for Rohit and I found it and it was so bloody expensive. I, Where did you find that? I was shooting for uh, Mai Prem Ki Diwani, I think I was in London and I was hunting for, you know, the uh, right glasses and I have found these glasses which were like titanium and it had like a really small uh, rim and you could see the expressions very open and very clear and it was for 300 pounds I, had, I didn't have the money and I was like shit this is really really expensive and it was strange because I was earning I could have just bought it but I think the way we were brought up <laughs> 300 pounds was like, you can't have spend that kind of on uh, eyeglasses. money on eyeglasses, yeah. uh, you know, because it's just, it's for a character and uh, you can just buy something from here. So I had to, I actually took permission from my, from my dad, you know, I said, uh, this is for Rohit and I want to buy these glasses, 300 pounds. Uh, so, I mean, at that time, 300 pounds would be like what? maybe 600 pounds today. Uh, so yeah, I found those glasses. But I, I really, uh, you know, juiced that glass out completely because I wore the same glasses uh, 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 as Rohit and I had, so, sorry, I had bought these for Raj and Koye in Kahona, Kahona Pyaar. Pyaar. That's what I was yeah, going to yeah. say, right. I bought them for Raj and Koye in Kahona Pyaar. Hai. And then uh, juiced it for, uh, yeah, for Rohit. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, I got, the, I got the story a little wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the glasses for Kahona Pyaar. They were 300 pounds. I didn't have the money because I was not earning. Correct. That makes sense. Correct. And um, then I juiced it out because it fit in Koye Milge. <laughs> That's the story. Yeah, I got a little confused. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, That's fab. Yeah. So, so I got my glasses, I got my voice, I got my hair, paise vasool ho gaye. And uh, the rest was body and language the and stuff. Uh, so the, the haila was, I think, something that came from my dad. It was written and I just had to find a way to, uh, you know, express that, uh, like, what the hell, you know? Whoa. And uh, that that was pretty easy. That was enough. Uh, the hyla came uh, pretty easy, but uh, it was an incredible uh, process. I I had asked Dad that hey, shall we do like a screen test where you know you see what I'm doing and wearing and stuff like that? He said no no no, we'll do straight straight on set. So he trusted you completely. Yeah, completely. And that kind of was a like a unsaid unsaid faith that he instilled in me that hey, do what you think is right. I trust you. And I think that really empowered me because him not being worried about, okay, I want to know what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're going to talk, how you're going to look. He didn't see anything until I came as Ruit on set and gave that shot. He had no idea uh, what I was going to wear, what I was going to look like. What nothing. was the first shot? The first shot of uh, Koi Milgya was, uh, Ruit was in his uh, school uniform and it's the scene where he sticks a sorry uh, note with the chewing gum. With the with the with the chewing gum. That that was the first uh, scene that we did. Um, and yeah, my ha my dad had no idea what I was going to wear or what I was going to do. But uh, things just fell in place. 
thank God they did. I was, I was nervous. I was very nervous. Very nervous. You know what uh, also blew my mind is that you bring in Jadu into the film at 1 hour 19 minutes. Yeah. Okay, this is your yeah. trump card. And for most of the first half, yeah. he's not there. Yeah, but that is dad. Dad, dad was so certain when uh, we were scripting the film. He said that my film should be either working or not working with or without Jadu. As in like, if before Jadu comes in, if the film has not gripped you completely and you're not with the film, then Jadu coming in will, you not know, do will not do anything. He was absolutely certain on that, is that we need to create, we need to create a, a, a need for something superb to come in because we want to help Rohit. Yeah. You know, if the audience is with Rohit, then Jadu can come as a cardboard box and it would still work. Uh, he, that was his belief and that is something that I've applied to every film I've done in my life. You know, if you have something fantastic in the film, then something needs to warrant it. Something in the film, the character, some, some identification needs to, uh, you know, create a space for it. Once you create the space for it in the, on, on the screen and in the hearts of uh, the audience, then as soon as that, that fantastic thing comes and fills it up, you will feel great. And, and then there's no looking back. There, then, you're, then it's a success all the way. So the challenge was the portion of the film before Jadu came in. And I think hearing my dad say these, these uh, lines, uh, made me understand uh, indirectly that the responsibility of the film lies with Rohit. Yeah. You know, we cannot rely on Jadu. Yeah. You cannot rely on that. That is something that um, will come and only help, but it's not going to make the film. Yeah, because if you don't love Rohit, then yeah. it's over. Then it's over. It's completely over. Yeah. And, and, and that's what he has applied to all his films. He, he really looks at you know, the broad strokes, yeah. you know, the Kahani and, and uh, yeah. But, you know, mm. I really feel uh, commercial Hindi cinema coming from where it is coming and going towards where it is going now is really, you know, it's a skill set. It's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of it skill is. set. It is. You know, there, there is a, the, the cinema, the big cinema that caters to, you know, and fills all these specific yeah. tanks and it's community experience, uh, you know, uh, and, and that's, I think, what the, uh, where, what explains it all, that it's a community experience, you know, when you're watching a film in the theater and if the film makes you want to share your, your highs uh, and your excitement with, with the people that you're with, you know, um, or even like subconsciously know that we're all going through the same thing. It's, it's, it's like a ride that you're all in together. That's another... It's that's, another high. It's another high. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a specific skill set yeah. uh, that you need to uh, uh, produce to make such uh, yeah. films. Uh, then, of course, there's the other kind that you, you know, you ingest, you, you, you can take in one-on-one, -on -one, you know. It's just you, you, you and the movie and it speaks to you directly, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and that's another another kind it's of It's another cinema. pleasure. It's another pleasure. Absolutely. And then I believe there is a sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I am after. I am after the... Between these two. Between these two. And I think it exists. But to create that, you need somebody who, you know, is from that world where you understand that skill set because that's an old school yeah. skill set. Uh, so belief in that. And not many people have it anymore. Not many people have it, which I think is a little sad because it is not, it is not bad or old. It is a skill set. It, it can be applied. So learn that, know this, and then find your sweet spot, you know, find that mix. That's what I'm after. That's it. That, I'm really just after that. <laughs> no, he said that in, in this interview that I was reading, Rakesh ji said that, 
shooting with jadu was really hard oh, because he God. was remote controlled dramatic yeah yeah and and to connect like to kind of make it all go in line like the eyes yeah. the the hands yeah. the lips what was it about like what was it like it was just difficult and it uh, which is why you know one of the re the reason that i had to stay in character because all of these things can just throw you off yeah. you know everything was on remote control and uh, so if jadu turns like that and has to look at me he has to aim the the animatronic guy needs to aim the eyeballs where i am because if the camera is behind you you can tell if i'm looking at you or there while talking to you so the head turn the eyeball you know making it all like and of course we were working with budgets which didn't allow us uh, you know heavy machinery um, but um, it was a a process of repetition again and again and again and again and i had to sustain sustain that emotion for all those uh, takes but uh, yeah well it all it all ended well speaking of endings i was fascinated to learn that there were actually two endings yeah there was a happy ending yeah 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 i remember and then which is what is in the film yeah. but there there was a sad ending yeah. where jadu doesn't give rohit the powers yeah. and i read that your father took it to like he showed subhash ji hmm. he showed karan hmm. he showed adi and yash ji hmm. and got opinions and and that yash ji liked the sad ending yeah because he thought that was bitter sweet yeah but adi was adamant it has to be happy absolutely so uh, yash uncle Yash uncle actually I think recognized the sweet spot that I'm talking about. So you have a commercial skill set film and your ending is just that it's it's over, you know. He's gone back. And you live with that bitter sweet feeling. <laughs> um I, I also loved that. I loved it. And then Adi came in and said that no 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 the people have to go back with the high. They have to go back with the high and that that was also absolutely true you know as as i said for a community experience and that what that's what he was looking at you know the community experience the vibration inside the theater not as a film not as a film on a tv screen that you're watching and jesting on your own but the euphoria inside a theater where the entire community is you know the film is bringing them all together so in the end of the film if you don't thread the needle and get them all at that juncture and go boom it'll be a little you know they don't leave them wanting not in this film don't leave them wanting and uh then i got a brain wave i said let's live as much as we can with the fact that he's gone so we had a scene where you actually start thinking that oh it's over and it's it's over it's gone and then in the scene after that when they're walking home you're still you're still in uh, uh, absorbing the truth that oh my god it's over and something happens and you know uh, he discovers that jadu has found a way to send the powers back <laughs> and uh, so we got both and so i was delighted because i got to play both the emotions yeah yeah but yeah. i was just thinking imagine a time when a director takes this massive very ambitious film gets feedback oh, yeah. asks his peers that's amazing it's amazing absolutely amazing i like, don't know what really, could that happen today i don't know you know that's something that i have learned from my dad um he is extremely extremely secure yeah. extremely secure um he would at a time like a krish 3 for instance uh he'd call my friends my my colleagues he would call farhan and uh, narrate the whole film to him and ask him his his opinion um uh, adi uh, so there's something in him that is so solid all he is looking for is i want to know i, I just want to get information it's not going to it's not going to break me if you don't don't like the film in fact there was a time where we were making in fact my first film kahona pyar hai uh so i won't name who it was now but you know someone <laughs> told my dad that uh, you should not make this film because uh you know whatever reasons this should not be the first 
they should not be the first and i can't uh, even believe yeah, that yeah 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 and i kind of also at a certain point i kind of agreed a little bit really yeah yeah i i this did this is pre shooting pre pre everything huh. we just script had the, we just had the script the the, huh. the 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 entire journey of the script and uh, and the meeting ended and my dad after the meeting got even a little bit more convinced that this is the kind of film that speaks to him yeah. and that he was going to make this film so he's very solid inside yeah. he just knows when he knows he knows so when he speaks to uh, um, you know his colleagues or my friends for feedback that's all he's doing he's just getting feedback he wants to just hear what you're saying you know it will either in if it's good it will empower him if it is bad it will empower him he learns something so uh, it's a great quality to have it is great quality to have and not many people have it i agree i agree <laughs> you know yeah but that it's just a, it's just a matter of how secure you are as yeah. a person yeah. yeah and as a filmmaker yeah you <laughs> said that you felt hollow when rohit was done oh yeah Why did you feel hollow? I can feel it right now. It just took me back in a flash. Uh, why? I don't know why. This is. I mean, I think it was a, a reliving uh, my my childhood uh, to be able to connect with that part of me. You know, it's like it's like I don't know if you ever done this. Uh, that there are some uh, uh, like in like in psychology or if you ever done like a. some kind of session in therapy and stuff they actually make you meet your meet meet your your child self and it it tears it tears you up you know uh, it it uh, it really really uh, does something to you uh, and for me that entire film was that i was meeting my child uh, you know my childhood uh, throughout that film and constantly speaking to that part of me saying that hey you know you're okay you're okay and giving him a chance to kind of like blossom know, blossom mm-hmm. uh so when the film got over i felt like gosh you know i'm letting that part of me go again i'm never going to you know live it again um but i realized when i lived uh like very recently now it's been 20 years uh but you don't really have to let let go of that part you know uh, it can always be there you just have to stay connected yeah. to it But yeah, I do remember feeling completely hollow. I remember doing a performance as Rohit in uh, uh, one of the award functions, and I I lost my glasses. I lost my glasses, and I just couldn't go home. I just could not go home. So I waited till the entire function was over, and I came back in my suit. Uh, I I was waiting in the van. I came back in the suit, and I I went, you know, under the stage. uh just like under the stage because that's i thought where maybe it's it's dropped through the through the hydraulic when i was coming up maybe it you know or it slipped and it fell or whatever and i i was hunting for those glasses for 1 hour i just i just it didn't Did stop you find them? i found them wow i found them i stayed there for one hour my entire staff was hunting in the you know in all the uh, the the kachra the wires the grass because under the stage it was just it was a ground and uh, there was a lot of uh, you know things there it was impossible it was like a need, needle in a, a haystack but i found it <laughs> then i went home <laughs> crazy but sweet yeah you know i think i was thinking even today i don't know how many actors would take on this role right it's a mm. very t- and like you said it's a very fine line yeah that you could you could just go over tell me from that time in these 20 years how much have your acting instincts evolved uh, you said to me i think around kabul that you know you always would work like there was a dog chasing you yeah and you had to outrun this dog yeah. but with kabul you let go of that dog yeah. and you found your sort of abandon as an artist yeah where yeah. are you today so yeah uh, i think what you said sounds very true to me even now that kabul was the beginning of uh, you know the emergence of of that love 
for what I do and uh, that becoming the, the, the driving force. And I think with Vedha, I, I, I really kind of like felt like I, I achieved it. I achieved. You were fantastic. Oh, thank you. It was thank one you. of my favorite performances of last thank time. Thank you. Just fab. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, but it's more amazing uh, for me because I, I really was my calmest self. I was really enjoying it. Um, I, I let the wrongs, uh, you know, I, I headed for the wrongs and then it didn't look wrong. And everything just was, I found a flow. I found a flow and that's what I was looking for. And I think with Vedha, I, I kind of nailed it. When I say nailed it, I don't mean as a performance, but as uh, what I was striving to achieve, the, the calm, uh, just being composed in front of the camera. Because I am, um, so Veda is about transcendence, right? He has all the pain inside him and all the, the trauma, the, the death of his brother, all of that. And he transcends all of that and has this, this look of, uh, you know, being completely relaxed and he has this smile on his face. So the transcendence is something that I, I refer to as my madness. That's, that's the madness that I love in movies. I love playing that, that, that madness. Uh, it's actually transcendence. I like characters that can transcend the first instincts, you know, and the second instincts and, and the third and the fourth. Just keep transcending. Keep it, rising. You know, keep rising and just, just keep sitting, just keep being there. I love those characters. Uh, I do not like characters that uh, are driven by their first instincts who are reactive and uh, yeah so I, I understand transcendence because I've played the madness in a lot of my films but my transcendence is is at a vibration that's a little hyper <laughs> you know I can transcend and you'll see like a shiver yeah. all of that was my transcendence yeah yeah but Veda's transcendence was really really calm and uh, zen like zen like and that that for me was was a personal victory uh, and it also taught me a lot of things. It took me to meditation. I could sit for an hour plus. Really? Yeah, an hour plus and just sit in still stillness and not want to come out of it because I started enjoying it so much. So I love how, uh, you know, being an actor can take you so many places and teach you so many things via the characters. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I learned that through Veda, which was... Very, very nice. Well, yeah. he's he's fantastic. But, but, Rithik, you did say that because the film didn't work so well, you said that maybe my fans don't want me to play a role like yeah. this. Right? Yeah. Um, maybe they're not open to you being that maybe. bad. But, maybe. But then, Rithik, my question is then, does the superstardom, does the success actually kind of become a sort of a Lakshman Rekha, you know, does mm. it become a place like, I mean, would you do Rohit today? So yeah, after Vedha, um, after the film didn't do well, I actually, it struck me that maybe, you know, there is, uh, this is dangerous ground. I can't repeatedly do films that don't cater. And I was surprised that I was thinking like this because it, up until then, it had never occurred to me that. You've never catered. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, Guzarish was not catering to who? Yeah. To yeah. no one. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, no, there's, there is no way to, uh, you know, think through this. We can't think through this. We don't really know what the truth is. But I do, yes, I am aware that this thought has crossed my mind. Uh, do I, should I, you know, save a window for films like this, uh, but continue to make sure that I do the kind of films that does get, get me a box office. Because no matter what you say, uh, you know, when you say what's more important, box office or uh, acclaim, uh, it is box office. Of course. It is, the, the biggest acclaim is, is box office. Yeah. Uh, that is when and how you know, uh, you know, how many people in the world you've contributed to as, as a community. Um, 
having said that, you know, now that Vikram Veda has released on OTT, I have uh, gotten amazing feedback from so many people who said, Are yaar, we should have watched this in, in the theatre. Uh, so I, I, I wonder, I wonder what we missed, uh, whether at all we missed something or maybe it was just not a community experience film. Yeah. Um, so a lot of things to just uh, learn. You can't learn all the lessons, but uh, they're good uh, things to ponder uh, while you continue to, you know, do the job at hand. <laughs> but yeah, I am a little confused. I'd say that. Yeah. But would you do a Rohit today? I would do it very differently, but I would do it. Right, but you would take the risk that I would this take film the risk. involved. I would take the risk. Exactly. I would take the risk. So you're still the same guy. Yeah, but uh, now I will have to take the risk knowing um, that a lot more is at stake. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to be aware of a lot. I'm going to be aware of the fact that I've, I've experienced what it feels like for a film not to do well at, at the box office, uh, and it's a recent. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a recent failure. Uh, which is why, uh, you know, it's fresh and uh, I can use it, you know, to make my decisions now. Um, but you're right. I, if something speaks to my heart, <laughs> there's no way I can say no. If there's a DNA match. It's a DNA match, you know, it, it pulls at my heartstrings. And you just go ahead and do it. You know, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the artist uh, always triumphs. Uh, That's you know. wonderful. Yeah, and I hope he to. always will. I, I know I will. Yes, <laughs> but thank you. Yes. Last question. Um, Koimilya led to Krish mm. 2006, Krish 3 2013. Ten years have passed. Where is Krish 4? Uh, well, it's what shall I say? <laughs> it's right where it needs to be. I am extremely excited. Um, it is uh, something that uh, I don't know how it's it's going to be uh, made because it's 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 seeming like uh, like you need like some ten hands to like you know put it all together. Um, but and every day it's just growing bigger. In terms of ambition. <laughs> In terms of yeah. So. Um, um, yeah, I should have answered in, uh, in another way because now it's taking me back to the, oh my God, how are we going to do this uh, place? Uh, but it's, I'm very excited and it is happening uh, and uh, soon, soon we will, we will, uh, you know, manifest and, and, and get what uh, we need to make this film uh, go on flaws. Amazing. Cannot wait to see you hmm. in that black leather jacket. Hmm all over again. Thank you so much, Ritik. This was lovely. Thank you. Absolute <laughs> pleasure. Hi, I'm Ritik Roshan and do subscribe to Film Companion for more of my interviews.